and welcome today. Alexander and I have in the studio with us Lee Karen Stowe, whose work is in basically photography, and she works with women throughout the world, um, listening to their stories, taking photographs of their experiences. So over to Karen, Lee Karen Stowe, and if you could tell us a little bit more about yourself and your work. Thank you, Bev. Hello, Alexander. Hello, everyone. Um, Hello, yes, I, um, I, I primarily I work as a documentary photographer um, with a background in journalism, and I'm interested in the personal narratives of women survivors of war, conflict and ge genocide. And traditionally, I've been out in the field um, working with the women who were um, uh, telling their stories, their testimonies. Um, now I'm moved into um, field research through a, a PhD and I'm working with um, women who are using visual ways, photography, visual art, um, to tell their own stories of their experiences of war, war and conflict. And um, it, particularly with a small group of women resettled to Hull in East Yorkshire, um, that I've been working with since about 2011, 12, about 10 years now, and using their own uh, photography, visual art to express their own experiences, tell their own show stories, um, advocate for change as self expression. Uh, and yeah, how sorry. You... Okay, no problem. And how, and how are they? finding this experience of using photography to um, tell their story, for their voices to be heard? Um, it's, it's more about finding, it's more about creating a space and a platform for the images that they've been taken over the years. Um, and also the, the photographs that they have carried with them on their journey from um, their countries of origin through war, to, through displacement, sometimes often for years in the refugee camp, how they've protected and cared for these images um, and how those images, those photographs, I'm talking like pho photograph albums as well as newer digital images on the phones and the, the survival of those photographs to hear and how through those images of their lives before, um, they can tell a more nuanced, complex, alternative story of the typical refugee narrative, which is often um, stereotyped and often misunderstood. And very much the refugee woman is often misrepresented. Um, photography has played a huge part in the misrepresentation of refugees um, and refugee women but it can be part of the solution as well. So it's working with them to look at the material they have um, without adding anything because it's all there, they have their own stories and they have this agency to tell their own stories and they want to, and they want to share this and they want to show this bigger narrative. So it's, it's working with them to find ways of doing that and then the stories that they want to share, which platforms would be appropriate, which would be ethical for them, which they would feel comfortable with, which they want to. Um, and for too long, other people have told their stories and now they, they, they want to tell their own story, which is as it should be. And it's just a joy to, to be working with them doing this. Uh, Lee, I'm quite fascinated by the aspect of uh, photography. And um, obviously you are a photographer. Um, but uh, from, from a research perspective, you know, um, you could go down the route of, you know, traditional, uh, traditional interviews and, and, and leave it uh, at that. So uh, can you tell us a little bit more, you sort of briefly touched on it uh, already, but uh, can you tell us a little bit more about and expand on how the women you're working with interact and engage and care for the photographs that you mentioned that they carry with them? And what is it that we can learn by focusing on using photography, but also focusing on, on phot photographs as sort of these digital and material uh, objects? I think, especially in the interview 
process in, in, in conversations, the photograph, it's, it's, I can't express how immensely um, important and valuable it is. One, photography breaks down barriers. It, it does do lots of um, other things as well, but it, it can break down barriers, especially if there is um, a language and cultural barriers, um, cultural differences, cultural different um, language. Sorry, I'm going off. Uh, it, it, it's it's a visual language that lots of people can relate to. So when you are, if I'm just doing a face-to-face -face interview, um, when you introduce a photograph, that photograph takes you into all kinds of um, levels of depths of stories. Um, the focus is on the image. The I mean, often the women are talking about using images of themselves in their lives before, before they were, uh, before the label of refugee was imposed on them, as they said, when I was a human being before I became a number, which is what we do not see. We don't see this side. So um, these images um, that they carry with them, they are their life, their history. Um, they're who they were before this horrible thing happened to them. Um, and so they are, um, they're, they're not just family snaps. They also, these images are crossing borders. Um, they're also, um, when you start to go into, into depth using these images in the interview, um, you get a more, a more detailed, a more emotive, a more, a ri it's, it's a richer experience when you have a visual photograph to look at. And I have to say that with starting this project, um, well, actually working with these women, especially with using these images in this way um, as a visual methodology, um, as insight, is um, I am taking uh, fewer photographs than, I've, than ever before. Um, because um, I am starting, well, I've, I've been going through the process of realizing that the images I take, it's one angle, it's one approach, it's one narrative. You could say it's the Western gaze. Um, so I'm looking at um, repositioning myself as the lone documentary photographer, taking a picture of a woman, thinking I'm telling her story, and then I'm now realizing that I haven't even touched even the surface of that story. Even if I've spent maybe a week, sometimes five weeks with, with the same woman who's telling the story, taking the images, it's nowhere near that when she pulls out a photograph from her album and she says, this is who I was. All of my images are just, that they don't go that, that they're not deep enough. So it's it's the, the richer insight, the more detail, um, uh, than I could ever hope to do with documentary photography, I think. Um, do you understand that? I mean, it's, it's um, and that, that, that's how it should be. And it's, it's, so it's more about creating a space for these images to be brought in, Im these images, these photographs to be shared by the woman who wants to tell more of a story than, than I could ever could, or that even um, that, that more that you could get in a traditional interview or with me as a documentary in my role as a documentary photographer mm -hmm. so it's completely you know completely changed the way i'm i'm working in my practice as well as viewing the value of photographs in learning about somebody mm -hmm. so you must have been finding this a very challenging experience to be going through working in this way that is, you know, that has in, in sort of introduced you to all these different insights and methods of working? Yes, um, it, it's had me questioning um, the last 25 years of my <laughs> documentary practice, you know, going around the world taking pictures of other people. Um, so, but it's also, um, uh, I, 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 it's it's making me realize that um, uh, how, how I can I, I should be shifting aside. Um, it's it's also I think made me realize 
the privilege I've had. The privilege I've had to just go into somebody's life, take a few pictures, interview them. I know that sounds superficial. I don't work that way. I work long, long term with people. But even so, then to come away, it feels like an extraction. I've had extracted something. And I've done, I mean, I've done a lot of work where um, uh, the women in Sierra Leone, I, I, I taught photography for the women to become indigenous photographers and they are actually working and building businesses. So um, uh, I have to think that I've shared, been sharing skills as well, but it's made me realize that um, photography should be more democratic than it is and it hasn't been. Um, and that uh, I'm losing I'm losing my thread now. I'm okay. okay. Well, yeah, yeah. And also, yeah. sorry. And they, I think I think the challenge the challenge as well is in my previous work as again the traditional documentary documentary photographer going off on assignments. Um, I could get on a plane and come back home. I had that privilege. Mm. Um, whereas here, the, the the women are here. They're in. The, the, the place this is where I live as well it's my hometown so the distance is reduced so it's more of an embedded intimate situation and um, also the more photographs we find um, because they the, photography now it's not just the it's um, how, how this it's the research is moving from analog right through to digital so it's going from a period where Everyone had a few photographs in albums yeah. or in a shoebox. Now there are billions and billions. We're overwhelmed, we're swamped mm. with images. Mm. And these women have gone through that journey as well as all the other journeys they've gone through. They've gone through the journey from analog to digital. Mm -hmm. So they have the mobile phones. So they're recording aspects of their families, their lives with the mobile phones. Mm. And I've had a similar journey from analog through to digital. Mm -hmm. And there is, we're at this, we're all at this place now where we're completely swamped and overwhelmed with images. Mm. There are too many images. And I'll say the word mass of images because that's, that's often how refugees are described. Mass. Mm. Yeah. You know, this mass of, this sea of humanity, this mass of bodies. We've got this mass of images. Do we know any more about people because of, we've got more images? We actually know less about people because of those images. Mm. So going back to these analog images, you find out more. And it was more where photographers were kept more. They weren't as dis photographs weren't as weren't as disposable. They were valued more. Mm. I mean, when you're, I mean, one of the women they they were told to leave their their refugee camp, pack up. They didn't even have time to pack. They just said, right, you're going. And we've been speaking about it this morning. The first thing she did was go and get the family photo albums. Mm -hmm. One of the first, first things. Mm -hmm. And now we don't need to, no one, because there's phones now. You've got all of your family albums on your phone. Most people have a phone. Mm -hmm. So it's, and the, the, this precious value they've kept with those. It's the first thing they thought about bringing the photographs. Um, and this comes over time and time again. Um, so it's really interesting how, I'm doing this research in this digital age where we're swamped with pictures um, and yet we're not using them as we should, I think. Um, talking, I, I about, was... talking about knowing oh, sorry. images uh, and we had the conversation before we started recording. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, whose story you are telling or if you are telling any stories at all or you know who's telling whose story. Exactly and this is this is what keeps me awake at night because um, my profession as a journalist a reporter you interview somebody you're telling a story and it goes out there you're the mediator the communicator um, it, and that that's what I'm trained to do but now um, what right do I have to tell another person's story whose stories have been told by other people for too long, um, uh, told by the media, told by NGOs to fill a certain narrative, to fill a certain framing, don't, you know, for sponsorship, for donors. Um, so 
that's why it, this is this is really challenged me with I mean and Bev knows as well I uh, last year I found it really really painful to to um, look at how I've operated well how all the all uh, photographers have operated in the past and also it, it ties in with uh, there's a lot of conversations going on about um, about how academics have operated in the past in maybe a, a anthropology or ethnographical way where you're going to a place and you're extracting so I know there's a big big conversation in academia right now isn't there about yeah. they call it the decolonialization of research so it's, it's permeating in all areas of life and, and especially as I say with with photography so your answer, your, the answer to your question, who is telling these stories? I am trying as much as I can just to create a space, to facilitate space. Um, but there's always, there's always a, a relation of power. There's, because I, I'm, I'm doing the PhD. Um, I'm privileged to be able to do the PhD and do this research. So that means I've got an element of power. Um, Mm. so this this I can't get away from that all mm. I can do is 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 acknowledge it know it's there be open with the women about it we're very open with you know I go back with these I tell them these dilemmas and um we talk about we talk through it and it's good because I'm just working with a small group of women over a long long period of time um I think in a lot of the literature there's been work with especially refugee women's groups where they've come together for say six months or a year and worked for a couple of hours each month together in a room I wanted to do that I wanted to create a collaborative participatory co-researcher group because the women to me are co-researchers not subjects but the pandemic came it was just absolutely impossible so what I did was I carried on with my usual methodology of working, working with just one woman for a long period of time intimately um, uh, in, in, you know, in their home. I've formed a support bubble with one woman and then when the restrictions were lifted, then I could meet another woman outside. Um, and so the pandemic forced me into keeping my own way of working. But with this new knowledge, this new realization, this new repositioning of myself as not the not the sole photographer, not the person who writes the story, but the person who gathers and creates the space for that story and those images to come through. Mm. Um, but again, and it's still not it's still not completely even because. Here I am talking about my research and the women are not with me talking about the research project. So I'm always conscious of that. Yeah. What I found very poignant was when she showed you the photograph, she says, this is what I was, as opposed to mm. this is what I am. So she talks you know, about herself in the past and it's almost like a negation of like what she is now. But look at me, look at me as I was because that's who I really am. And now I'm just this refugee woman. I'm just, you know, the, all the labels are being attached to me and negative yes. identities, yeah. Yes, but, but, but also um, uh, the women were telling me um, that it's not all um, negative because that the, the refugee woman label um, becomes part of multiple identities that she has. So she's she's proved that she's survived that she's resilient she's gone through that and it's added to it mm. it's added to her experience mm. of who she is now so there's lots of different conflictions between maybe some of the things I've been reading about and then I then and then they say no no it's not like that going through this PhD journey and sharing it intimately with the women I'm just more relaxed about it so I know where my images fit and mm. I know if they want me to take the image. I feel honoured, I feel proud. And then when I say, have you got a picture of that that you were talking about the other day? I've got one. It's and lovely. it's lovely that their family, because the, the, many of them are still separated for their, from their families and back in their countries of origin. They've heard about the project. So they're finding these old pictures and sending them through the phone. 
Oh. Which I mentioned this to Dawn and she just got so excited because it means it, it means there's no distance and time. It's mm. you you you're receiving an image from there which they've never had before. Yeah. All yeah. our pictures in our albums are from the past, so now we're getting images yeah. from the past coming through like that, but also from the present. So it's, this photography is connecting us in so many ways, and I realise I'm just rambling on so. <laughs> no, I must tell you that I'm I'm actually really honoured to be your supervisor because I think the work you're doing is absolutely amazing. Um, Alexander, did you have another question? No, I think there was a nice way to wrap things up on, you know. Yes. Sort of, uh, yes. Uh, I think I've just written my conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think you have. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> Lee. I really do think you have. And thank so. you for sharing that with us uh, today, Lee. Yes, absolutely. Thank oh, you for sharing such a personal journey with us. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you.